3.2 now, solving linear systems algebraically. Now we just got done in 3.1, solving linear systems graphing. All right, no problem. However, let's face it, it is actually a little easier to do this algebraically, and that's what we're going to be working on here right now. So we first have the substitution method, which is my least favorite method, but can be easier sometimes. And the first step with the substitution method is you solve one equation for one variable. All right, so you get one variable in there. And then you substitute that entire equation into the other. And what that does is that takes a variable out. You only have one variable left, so you can just solve for that one variable like you would any other equation and take that answer for number three and substitute it back into the second equation to find the last variable. Word-wise, sounds very confusing. Don't blame you. But once you see an example and how to do it, you'll understand exactly what I'm saying here. Let's see how they like my energy ray. All right, so we got to pick one to solve basically. And the, the thing here is you can solve for any variable. So make it the easiest one possible. I have one, two, three, four different variables. Which one do you think would be the easiest for me to solve for? I pick the bottom one. Because if I wanted to solve for that x, all I have to do is one step. One item. Move one thing and it's already by itself. So for me, if I move that 2y over to the other side, x is already by itself. And the reason I chose to move the 2y uh, by minus 2 is because it's a plus 2. Um, but in one step, I have x all by itself already. So now, because this, I switched into this down here, x equals negative 2y plus 2, I can take this value and plug it in for x right here. So I can plug it right in there for x. So I take this, I'll plug it in there for x, and I have this big, huge, long thing. Now, even though that thing is big and long, and even though we have the distributive property, and it might take a little bit of time, at least we only have one variable, so I can figure out now what y is. As in, remember, when we graphed them, we found a point where they crossed. You had an answer, an ordered pair, which is an x and a y. Well, now we're finding the y. So after I find the y, I'm still going to have to find the x for the answer. So, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6y. 3 times that 2 is positive 6. I still have a positive 4y there and a negative 4. I combine my like terms. I have a negative 6y and a 4y, so that's negative 2y. I still have the 6 equals negative 4. Since I have my y's on this side, let's move the numbers over to the uh, right side. So I would do that by subtracting 6 because I have a positive 6 there. So they cross out, so I have negative 2y equals negative 10. And then I divide both sides by negative 2, and I end up getting y equals 5. All right. Well, it's actually not too difficult from here, because I can pick any one of the two originals and take this y equals 5 and plug it back in to figure out what x is. So I'm going to plug it into the bottom one, because it'll just be simpler. If I plug a 5 in here, 2 times 5 is 10. So then in one step again, I can just subtract that 10 over to the other side. Because it's a positive 10, I subtract 10 find out that x equals 8. So my actual official answer to that problem was negative 8, 5. Now, this method, linear combination, um, will work. And this is the method that I use most of the time to solve my systems of equations. And there are many ways to do this. But I'm going to try to make this as simple as possible. That's what I'm going to do. You, when you're doing linear combination, you're trying to get items to cross out when you add them together. The way that I'm going to teach you here how to do this works every single time, regardless of how large or small the numbers are. Now, the numbers might be really large when you multiply them through, but it will always work. And I'm trying to make it so that this doesn't confuse you more than it already might. So the first step says that you multiply the bottom number by the top number, and then you multiply the top number by the opposite of the bottom number. And once again, looks a little shady right now. You don't really know what I'm saying. But just kind of write that down in your notes, and maybe it'll make a little more sense later on when we're doing this. Um, then number two, then you line the two things up, those two equations that, uh, that you have now, the two new ones, you add them together, and you'll realize that a variable cancels out, which makes the problem much easier to solve from that point on. And then whatever your answer is, just like in the substitution method, um, you'll end up having um, a second equation. You plug that uh, answer in, and you'll get uh, the second uh, part of your ordered pair. So once again, very confusing. When I grow up, I'm going to Bovine University. So here's what I mean. 
what I mean is we're going to have to add these up but right now if I add them straight down to the X's cancel out no if I add this straight down to the Y's cancel out no so the point I'm getting at is I have to add these together to get something to actually physically cancel out so I'm gonna multiply both the top and the bottom by something in order to get this to happen so what I said was you take whatever's on the top and you multiply it on the bottom so I had a 2 leading leading that right the 2 is leading that so I multiply by 2 on the bottom I have a 4 on the bottom here so I multiply the top by a negative 4 the opposite right so multiply the top by the bottom multiply the bottom by the opposite of the top there so there we go I said to distribute negative 4 times 2x is negative 8x negative 4 times negative 4y is positive 16y negative 4 times that 13 though so all that equals negative 52 on the bottom 2 times 4 is 8x 2 times a negative 5 is negative 10y and that equals 2 times 8 which is 16 now if I add these straight down look what happens negative 8 and positive 8 cancels out when I add them straight down 16 plus negative 10 is 6y negative 52 plus 16 is negative 36 so I divide each of those I can just divide them by 6 because it's a simple little equation figure out that my y is negative 6 once I have y equals negative 6 all I need to do is pick one of those two original equations and plug a negative 6 in well I'll choose the top one I plug a negative 6 in for y plug that in right there I have a negative 4 times negative 6 which is 24 so it's 2x that's a 24 and a 13 so 24, I subtract 24 on both sides because I'm trying to get x all by itself. So 24 is cancel. So I have 2x equals negative 11. I can divide both sides by that 2 to get x equals 5.5. So put them together, I get 5, negative 5.5 and negative 6 as my answer to the problem. I've coughed up scarier stuff than that. So when we come back here, I'll finish up with the rest of the examples. Now we've done most of the actual um definitions and you've seen an example I'll finish up the rest of 3.2 here when we come back